Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Let y'all rocking with me. For this video, I'm going to be speaking on one of the most graphic things that can happen to you inside a prison. Now, if you've been rocking with the channel, you've heard my stories before. You've heard what I've gone through, whether it was fights, fighting multiple people, whether it was getting fired up with a brick in which they put a brick inside of a canteen bag or a lock, and I got hit over the head with it. I got cut on my face. You can see the sky. You can see the picture from when it first happened. I would rather go through all of that again multiple times before I ever have to go through what I'm going to be speaking on in this video. Now inside of the county jail, we hear the stories about the JIT camps, we hear about the brutality, we hear the COs are putting hands on you the second you get there up until the point that you EOS. We hear about the razors, the box cutters, people getting cut and it's detaching their cheeks and people are having to get air lifted up out of there, they're getting poked up so badly, all of these crazy violent things going on within prisons that are from the ages of 14 to 24 years old. Just on site, attacking each other nonstop, flooded with gangs. It's madness. One thing that I wasn't hearing about though in county was the broomsticks. While I was at the reception center, there was a kid that was in there. I'm not going to put his name out there out of respect because... This is somebody that I do respect and that I considered a friend during the short time that I was around him. And if you went through the Central Florida Reception Center around the same time that I did, you know who I'm speaking on. And if you watch this video, I ask out of respect for that person, you do not put their name in the comment section because nobody wants to go through something as extreme as this. And furthermore, nobody wants to ever speak on it. When we got there, there was a kid that was already there. The biggest kid inside of the quad at the time. This is 18 and under. I mean, his arms were big. His chest was big. This kid had abs. He was ripped and he was a workout animal. All this kid did was work out. And we have to PT. We have to do physical training. The staff members force it on us. So we got to do mad push-ups, sit-ups, squats, all types of workouts. And this kid always led the workouts. He was a permanent at CFIC inside of the JIT dorm, which was damn near unheard of. They just, they didn't keep people there unless there was a certain reason to keep you there. And a lot of us were curious as to why he was kept here and he had went to prison already and I mean an actual prison, not the reception. He was either at Indian River or something CI. But for a fact, he was at one of those camps, if not both. I don't know the backstory because I didn't want to ask him. I'm not sure there's a way to ask somebody, hey, did you get raped? But the story went like this. He got jumped. He was held down. They took a broomstick and they put it inside of him. He was raped with the broomstick. And this was so fucking common at the JIT camps. When we hit CFIC, this was all we were thinking about. We weren't worried about getting cut. We weren't worried about getting fired up, fighting. We weren't worried about any of that. The only thing that had us shook was the thought of getting fucked with a broomstick. And how they would do it was so brutal. We heard the stories. They would take the brooms and scrape the wooden end on the floor so that it would be splinted. So when they put the stick inside of you, the splinters are breaking off into your intestines and you need to be shipped off to a hospital and taken from that prison. And the thing is, they weren't doing this to people so that they could stay on the compound. They were doing this to people as a last resort. Extortion was the biggest game inside of the JIT camps, inside of the youth offender prisons, 14 to 24. If you're getting money, they're going to see if you're weak and they're going to take that money. And this broomstick ritual was so shocking. And the horror stories that came with it was so graphic that just the thought of it happening, kids would break it off. Kids would be more than willing to be extorted. 
And how it will go it was always the same thing. They got jumped inside of the cell, inside of the mop closet, inside of the bathrooms, wherever it was. They got jumped. They got held down. They stick one inside of them. And when I met this kid at CFIC, that is what gave me the realization that there's no discrimination against anyone. Because like I said, this was one of the biggest kids that I've seen inside of the JIT camps. This kid was huge. He was strong. He was like my height. He could fight. There was nothing that wasn't checking out about this kid. And on top of all of that, he was a gang member. But when you get jumped, when you get held down, when your pants get ripped off of your body, you're fully exposed. They flip you over as they're beating you. This isn't peaceful. They're beating you the fuck up. You might be getting poked up. As this is happening, they might have locks and socks. They're trying to hit it off your dick and nuts. They're hitting it off your kneecaps. Hitting it off of any part of your body that's going to hurt. They got a poker poking up the bottom of your feet, your rib cage, your armpits, wherever they can get you. Stomping on your fucking head with a pair of boots on. They flip you over. They hold you down. And you're penetrated with a wooden stick. Thinking about that and seeing the size difference between me and him, it made me think the only way I can stop this from happening is by not allowing myself to be jumped. And how do I do that? I can't avoid going to the bathroom. If you're called out in a one-on-one -on -one to fight, you got to fight. You can't buck a call out. But if it was a setup the whole time and then they rush in after the fact, you're going to get got. What can you do about it? The realization that this kid is bigger than me, most likely from what I've seen, can fight better than me because he was knocking shit slap out in prison. I only got one knockout in prison. This kid was known for putting shit to bed. He was just on another level as far as athleticism. That realization that he got got made me feel even more vulnerable at that point. And anyone can talk a big game. Oh, if they do that to me, I'm going to kill them. I don't know anyone that got raped with a broomstick at a JIT camp and killed anybody after the fact. Because there's so many different things that you have to consider when this happens. The first one being, this isn't something consensual. You're having something shoved inside of you as it tears your insides apart. Now, there was somebody that I was in county with from Tampa. And he was small. He was skinny, lightweight. He had golds in his mouth. When he had something to see, I, he was beaten and he was raped. And there was a whole report about what actually happened to him. It was big. There's news articles about it. There was a federal lawsuit about what happened. And he ended up suing and got off with like sixty or seventy thousand dollars because of what happened to him. And the thing is, he didn't even snitch on anybody. He only went up and told the CEO what happened because he couldn't stop the bleeding. He kept on bleeding. He was in the shower trying to stop it, and he's still bleeding out of his ass. And a thing that a lot of people don't think about, and oh, if this happens, I'm just gonna go and attack and da da da. You don't know if you have internal bleeding. You don't know if you're dying. You don't know if you're going to have a massive infection that's going to kill you. You just don't know. When they're rubbing this thing off of the floor trying to make it splinter, where they're sticking it inside of the toilet bowls to get it nasty, this is meant to hurt you in the worst way. And when staff finds out this happened to you, they're going to take you to medical. They're going to try to fix you up. They're going to put you in confinement under PREA, which is the Prison Rape Elimination Act. There's going to be a massive investigation. You're going to be taken off of that compound, and you'll most likely never see anybody again that you saw at that compound. But for the main kid that I'm speaking on in this story, I was around him my entire time at CFIC. 
And he didn't carry himself like a victim. He walked around like an alpha male. He was fighting, like I said, working out nonstop. He demanded respect. He pretty much told everyone what to do, when to do it, because he knew the ropes and we were trying to learn them. And not only that, he was participating in other people's TOHs, including mine. None of them came to broomsticks or anything insane like that. But he was beating shit up and he beat my shit in. My whole chest and stomach was bloodshot. Every blood vessel under my skin was burst. My chest and my stomach was red and blue. But through all that, you pass the TOH, you get cool with these people. And once you've gone through it, you start doing it to other people. It's like you've graduated through the hazing and now you have the responsibility to do it to others, but not to the extent of what they were doing as something CI. But it didn't stop there. It doesn't stop at the youth offender prisons because when you graduate, when you either have your youth offender title stripped and you get sent to an adult prison or you go straight to an adult prison, there's no more broomsticks. Nobody is threatening you with the broomstick. Now you have grown men that just want to fuck you. And if you aren't willing, there is a chance that you can be raped inside of these adult prisons. And at this point, it isn't even for extortion. It's just self-pleasure for the person that is trying to force this on you. And this is a situation... Where all that tough talk, I'll kill somebody if they do this to me. This is where your hand gets forced. Because they'll step to you and whether they step to you trying to sweet talk you. Whether they get you drunk and they get you high and then they start touching on you. Or whether they flat out tell you, look, this is what's going to happen. And they show you they got a knife in their hand. This is the situation where you must decide what you're going to do. You're going to check in. You're going to go PC. You're going to scream for help? Are you going to kill him like you said you would, badass? You want to stay in here forever and deal with this shit continuously? What are you going to do? These are the situations you will find yourself in inside of prison. And these are the situations that people don't like to speak on. Because everybody likes to sound gangster. Everybody likes to sound like this can't happen to them. This type of shit can happen to anybody. And if there's a group of people that are coming forward to do this to you, there's nothing you can do about it. The only way you can avoid a situation like this is by not going to prison. Staying the fuck out of prison. Because even when it comes to gang members, you had gang leaders that participated in having sex with boys, with punks. And they loved the idea of finding someone that thinks they're tough, turning them out, having them shave their eyebrows, getting them a tight ass uniform, and walk around with a brand new fucking name. Oh, you were Brian before? Well, you're Brianna now. But one thing that I respect to this day about that kid that I met in the Central Florida Reception Center is he doesn't let his past define him that isolated incident in his life does not control his future it did not psychologically break him he was not walking around like a lost soul and you see this with a lot of other people inside of prison especially when i went to the adult prisons and you see some of these boys you know that they're not gay. You know that they weren't cut out for prison. But whatever it is that landed them there, this is what they have to do to survive. And they're so ashamed of what they're going through on a daily basis and what's happened to them. And they're so ashamed by the fact that you know and you see this happening. You can see it in their eyes if you ever look one of them in their eyes. They look terrified. And they look like they want to scream out for help. But they can't for two reasons. One, whoever they're under isn't going to let them go anywhere. And two, I can't give a fuck about you. They can't give a fuck about you. This is prison. I got to care about me. 
I got to make sure that I survive and I do everything I need to do to damn sure make sure I never end up like you. And to me, one of the toughest life lessons that I learned inside of prison is sometimes you have to look at people and you can sympathize with them if you want to, but you have to understand there's nothing you can do for them. And at this point, they're a life lesson to you. At this point, that person's human existence is nothing to me except for telling me and showing me where I don't want to be, how I don't want to live, who I don't want to become. It's a sad truth, but it's the truth nonetheless. But hey, it's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with Charlie. Y'all rocking with me. Till next time.